This is the SPM listening test. There are four parts to the test. You will hear each part twice. For each part of the test, there will be time for you to look through the questions and time for you to check your answers. Write your answers on the question paper. You will have six minutes at the end of the test to copy your answers onto the answer sheet. The recording will now be stopped. Please ask any questions now because you must not speak during the test. Now, open your question paper and look at part 1. You will hear people talking in seven different situations. For questions 1 to 7, choose the correct answer A, B or C. You will hear each recording twice. You now have 30 seconds to look at part 1. Now, we are ready to start. Listen carefully. Question 1. You will hear a woman talking about solo travelling. I never thought I'd be more comfortable travelling solo. Often, when you are surrounded by others, it can be hard to chill out as much as you'd like. Travelling solo allows me to enjoy reading, writing, listening to podcasts and appreciate myself a little more. The world is in your hands as you are free to choose a destination, make changes midway, adjust at places or simply loiter around. Now, listen again. I never thought I'd be more comfortable travelling solo. Often, when you are surrounded by others, it can be hard to chill out as much as you'd like. Travelling solo allows me to enjoy reading, writing, listening to podcasts and appreciate myself a little more. The world is in your hands as you are free to choose a destination, make changes midway, adjust at places or simply loiter around. Question 2. You will hear a bank officer talking about opening a bank account. If you are planning to open your first savings account, here are a few things you must consider. First, always find out the account charge fee. Next, there are some banks that do not require a minimum amount for teenagers. The most important thing to consider is internet banking facilities. If you prefer to do most of your banking transactions online, it is advisable to check if the bank provides 24 hours online services. Now, listen again. If you are planning to open your first savings account, here are a few things you must consider. First, always find out the account charge fee. Next, there are some banks that do not require a minimum amount for teenagers. The most important thing to consider is internet banking facilities. If you prefer to do most of your banking transactions online, it is advisable to check if the bank provides 24 hours online services. Question 3. You will hear an announcement on a delayed train. Attention passengers. We are sorry that the 954 ETS Platinum Gold service to Butterworth is delayed for 30 minutes. This is due to flat water that caused the railway to be unsafe, thus limiting the speed. We are sorry that your journey will take longer than planned. Now, listen again. Attention passengers. We are sorry that the 954 ETS Platinum Gold service to Butterworth is delayed for 30 minutes. This is due to flat water that caused the railway to be unsafe, thus limiting the speed.
We are sorry that your journey will take longer than planned. Question 4. You will hear a doctor advising a patient on starting a healthy diet. Doctor, it's difficult for me to stop eating fast food and dessert. Well, I suggest you make small changes to your diet, not drastically change. Start with stocking up your pantry or refrigerator with healthy food. It is important to have a meal plan, so you should go grocery shopping. Only buy food you plan to use in your meals for the week. Now, listen again. Doctor, it's difficult for me to stop eating fast food and dessert. Well, I suggest you make small changes to your diet, not drastically change. Start with stocking up your pantry or refrigerator with healthy food. It is important to have a meal plan, so you should go grocery shopping. Only buy food you plan to use in your meals for the week. Question 5. You will hear an interview with successful triplets. Today, we have three successful triplets, Kamal, Kamil and Camelia, who would like to share about their secrets for being successful in their studies. Yeah, I always make study a priority. Successful students know how to succeed because they have made their study their top priority. Well, to me, being punctual is important. Whether you have to take a test or have a study date with a friend, it's important to be on time if you want to be a successful student. Working honestly is another way. This means you should do your own work Avoid copying and avoid cheating at all costs. Now, listen again. Today, we have three successful triplets, Kamal, Kamil and Camelia, who would like to share about their secrets for being successful in their studies. Yeah, I always make study a priority. Successful students know how to succeed because they have made their study their top priority. Well, to me, being punctual is important. Whether you have to take a test or have a study date with a friend, it's important to be on time if you want to be a successful student. Working honestly is another way. This means you should do your own work, avoid copying and avoid cheating at all costs. Question 6. You will hear a radio announcer talking about how to reduce rubbish. The best solution to reduce the garbage is to buy products that don't have much packaging. When choosing a product, keep in mind how much garbage it will make. For instance, diapers and paper towels have to be thrown away after they are used. Cloth can be washed and used many times. So, it's often a better choice. It's important to remember that there are ways to reduce the amount of garbage we make. Now, listen again. The best solution to reduce the garbage is to buy products that don't have much packaging. When choosing a product, keep in mind how much garbage it will make. For instance, diapers and paper towels have to be thrown away after they are used. Cloth can be washed and used many times, so it's often a better choice. It's important to remember that there are ways to reduce the amount of garbage we make. Question 7. You will hear an advertisement introducing a new product. Having problem with your itchy scalp? Grey hair? Feeling stress? No worries. Here are the solutions. Rosalia with essential oils helps you to wash away your dandruff. Special ingredients such as bamboo extracts help reduce the itchiness while charcoal extracts help to darken your hair. It's affordable for everyone. 
Now, listen again. Having problem with your itchy scalp, grey hair, feeling stress? No worries. Here are the solutions. Rosalia with essential oils helps you to wash away your dandruff. Special ingredients such as bamboo extracts help reduce the itchiness while charcoal extracts help to darken your hair. It's affordable for everyone. That is the end of part 1. Now, turn to part 2. You will hear a conversation about Malaysian food. Choose the correct answer, A, B or C. You now have one minute to look at part 2. Hey, have you ever tried Malaysian food? I heard it's absolutely delicious. No, I haven't had a chance yet. What makes Malaysian food so special? Well, Malaysian cuisine is a blend of flavours from different ethnic groups such as Malay, Chinese and Indian. It results in a unique combination of spices, herbs and ingredients that create amazing taste profiles. That sounds intriguing. Can you give me some examples of popular Malaysian dishes? Of course. One famous dish is nasi lemak, which is the national dish of Malaysia. It's an aromatic rice dish cooked in coconut milk and served with sambal, spicy chili paste, fried anchovies, peanuts, cucumber and a boiled egg. It's absolutely delicious. That sounds incredible. I love coconut milk based dishes. What else is there? Another popular dish is satay, a skewered and grilled meat usually served with a peanut sauce. It is a popular street food that can be found everywhere. Satay can be chicken, beef or even lamb. The meat is marinated in a blend of spices and then grilled to perfection. The combination of flavours is mouth-watering. Oh, I've had satay before, but I didn't know it was Malaysian. It's indeed amazing. Satay is also served with a side of rice cakes or sliced cucumber. Are there any vegetarian options in Malaysian cuisine? Absolutely. One dish you should try is called nasi goreng which is a fried rice dish. It typically includes a variety of vegetables, tofu, and sometimes even mock meat. It's full of flavours and often served with a fried egg on top. Can be enjoyed on its own as a complete meal or served alongside other dishes such as fried chicken, satay skewers, or pickled vegetables. It is a versatile dish that can be customized to suit individual tastes by adding ingredients according to preference. That sounds like a perfect choice for me as a vegetarian. Is there anything sweet or dessert-like that I should try? Definitely. One popular dessert is called chendo. It is a sweet treat made with coconut milk, palm sugar and green rice flour jelly strips. It's often served with shaved ice and topped with red beans. Chandel can be found everywhere in Malaysia. It is commonly consumed as a snack or dessert, especially during hot days. Chandel is definitely a unique dessert. 
It is not only a delicious dessert, but also a cultural experience that reflects the diverse culinary traditions of Malaysia. It is a must-try treat for anyone visiting or exploring Malaysian cuisine. Overall, Malaysian cuisine seems to offer a wide range of flavor and options for everyone. Absolutely. With its blends of flavors, cultural influences and street food culture, Malaysian cuisine offers a delightful culinary adventure for food enthusiasts. The diversity of Malaysian food is one of its greatest strengths. I highly recommend exploring Malaysian cuisine if you get the chance. Yeah, I'll definitely keep that in mind. Thanks for introducing me to Malaysian food. I can't wait to try it out soon. Now, listen again. Hey, have you ever tried Malaysian food? I heard it's absolutely delicious. No, I haven't had a chance yet. What makes Malaysian food so special? Well, Malaysian cuisine is a blend of flavors from different ethnic groups such as Malay, Chinese and Indian. It results in a unique combination of spices, herbs and ingredients that create amazing taste profiles. That sounds intriguing! Can you give me some examples of popular Malaysian dishes? Of course! One famous dish is nasi lemak, which is the national dish of Malaysia. It's an aromatic rice dish cooked in coconut milk and served with sambal, spicy chili paste, fried anchovies, peanuts, cucumber, and a boiled egg. It's absolutely delicious. That sounds incredible. I love coconut milk-based dishes. What else is there? Another popular dish is satay, a skewered and grilled meat usually served with a peanut sauce. It is a popular street food that can be found everywhere. Satay can be chicken, beef, or even lamb. The meat is marinated in a blend of spices and then grilled to perfection. The combination of flavors is mouth-watering. Oh, I've had satay before, but I didn't know it was Malaysian. It's indeed amazing. Satay is also served with a side of rice cakes or sliced cucumber. Are there any vegetarian options in Malaysian cuisine? Absolutely. One dish you should try is called nasi goreng, which is a fried rice dish. It typically includes a variety of vegetables, tofu, and sometimes even mock meat. It's full of flavors and often served with a fried egg on top. Can be enjoyed on its own as a complete meal or served alongside other dishes such as fried chicken, satay skewers, or pickled vegetables. It is a versatile dish that can be customized to suit individual tastes by adding ingredients according to preference. That sounds like a perfect choice for me as a vegetarian. Is there anything sweet? or dessert-like that I should try? Definitely! One popular dessert is called chendol. It is a sweet treat made with coconut milk, palm sugar, and green rice flour jelly strips. It's often served with shaved ice and topped with red beans. Chendol can be found everywhere in Malaysia. It is commonly consumed as a snack or dessert, especially during hot days. Chendol is definitely a unique dessert. It is not only a delicious dessert, but also a cultural experience that reflects the diverse culinary traditions of Malaysia. It is a must-try treat for anyone visiting or exploring Malaysian cuisine. Overall, Malaysian cuisine seems to offer a wide range of flavor and options for everyone. Absolutely! With its blends of flavors, cultural influences, and street food culture, Malaysian cuisine offers a delightful culinary adventure for food enthusiasts. The diversity of Malaysian food is one of its greatest strengths. I highly recommend exploring Malaysian cuisine if you get the chance. Yeah, I'll definitely keep that in mind. 
Thanks for introducing me to Malaysian food. I can't wait to try it out soon. That is the end of part 2. Now, turn to part 3. You will hear five short extracts in which people are talking about flowers. Choose from the list A to G what each speaker says. Use the letters only once. There are two extra letters which you do not need to use. You now have 30 seconds to look at part 3. Speaker 1 Wedding fashions tend to come and go, but there are always the favourite flowers which remain forever popular with brides-to-be. My top three all-time favourite wedding flowers have to be the rose, peonies and hydrangea. The rose is often top of a bride's list and it's not surprising as it has everything a bride could possibly wish for in a bouquet. Beauty, a delicate fragrance and timeless elegance. Speaker 2 One day in the flower shop, I was discussing the strange magic of scent with a customer. Everything smells different to everyone. Stargazer lilies smell of floral perfection to some, but to me, they smell like hot dogs. I love tulips because they just smell green and fresh with a hint of honey. When another customer interrupted with, Tulip smells like so, only to you, dear lady, to me, they are divine. Speaker 3 Know your flowers, gentlemen. They are a perfect gift as they hold specific meanings. On my second date with my wife, I bought pink carnations that symbolize affection and admiration. I proposed with the classic red roses. Then, every time we had a fight, I bought her white tulips when it is time to say sorry. Although expensive, the smiles after receiving those flowers are worth every penny. Speaker 4 When I was seven, I was almost poisoned by beautiful nightshade blooms. My mom rushed me to the bathroom to wash my hands and repeatedly asked, whether I put my hands in my mouth. It was so frightening. Once I had children, I armed myself with this knowledge and quickly learned that my garden was full of poisonous plants. Lots of garden favourites pose a true threat to humans, pets and livestock. Speaker 5 The most recent trend in floral design is using dried flowers and grasses. They don't die, it's both cost-efficient and convenient. The best part is there are so many varieties. Unlike a lot of floral arrangements, single stems of dried plants are sculptural and centerpiece worthy on their own. Just one branch of eucalyptus is hauntingly beautiful on its own and it can stay that way for years. Now, listen again. Speaker 1 Wedding fashions tend to come and go, but there are always the favourite flowers which remain forever popular with brides-to-be. My top three all-time favourite wedding flowers have to be the rose, peonies and hydrangea. The rose is often top of a bride's list and it's not surprising as it has everything a bride could possibly wish for in a bouquet. Beauty, a delicate fragrance and timeless elegance. Speaker 2 One day in the flower shop, I was discussing the strange magic of scent with a customer. Everything smells different to everyone. Stargazer lilies smell of floral perfection to some, but to me, they smell like hot dogs. I love tulips because they just smell green and fresh with a hint of honey. 
when another customer interrupted with, Tulip smells like soap. Only to you, dear lady. To me, they are divine. Speaker 3 Know your flowers, gentlemen. They are a perfect gift as they hold specific meanings. On my second date with my wife, I bought pink carnations that symbolize affection and admiration. I proposed with the classic red roses. Then, every time we had a fight, I bought her white tulips when it is time to say sorry. Although expensive, the smiles after receiving those flowers are worth every penny. Speaker 4 When I was seven, I was almost poisoned by beautiful nightshade blooms. My mum rushed me to the bathroom to wash my hands and repeatedly asked whether I put my hands in my mouth. It was so frightening. Once I had children, I armed myself with this knowledge and quickly learned that my garden was full of poisonous plants. Lots of garden favourites pose a true threat to humans, pets and livestock. Speaker 5 The most recent trend in floral design is using dried flowers and grasses. They don't die. It's both cost-efficient and convenient. The best part is there are so many varieties. Unlike a lot of floral arrangements, single stems of dried plants are sculptural and centerpiece worthy on their own. Just one branch of eucalyptus is hauntingly beautiful on its own and it can stay that way for years. That is the end of part 3. Now, turn to part 4. You will hear an interview about bearded dragons. For questions 21 to 30, fill in the missing information in each numbered space. Use no more than one word for each space. You now have one minute to look at part four. Hi, and welcome to our new show, Exotic Animal Kingdom, a program geared towards introducing animals to the young and old. In today's show, our young but experienced guests will introduce us to the fantastic world of bearded dragons. Welcome, Jeremy. Now, Jeremy, I must admit that a bearded dragon sounds something like out of a fantasy book. What exactly? is a bearded dragon. Here, why don't you hold on to Bert while I talk about him. Bearded dragons actually originated from the deserts of Australia, and this is one of several species that survive in that climate. Today, beardies like this one are bred in captivity here in the US. Okay, so what are some of the essential things to know when getting a bearded dragon? I mean, can you raise them as a family pet? Bearded dragons make great family pets and are very calm creatures. Yeah, this one seems quite friendly. You just need to know how to care for them. Well, what are some of the things you should keep in mind? First, you need to have the right supplies. Some kind of enclosure. 
Like a cage or something? Yeah, a full spectrum fluorescent light bulb and a basking lamp, branches and rocks to climb and bask on, a food or water dish, and something to line the bottom of the cage. Okay, well, let's get down to some of the basics. What are the dietary needs of a bearded dragon? They sound like a very carnivorous beast. Perhaps uh, they eat fiery Mexican tacos or something like that? No, bearded dragons are omnivores. Omnivores? What exactly are those? Um, creatures that eat insects, vegetables and greens, the leafy parts of plants and their stems. Okay, you mean like, for example, carrots or something like that? Young dragons like bird can be fed small crickets twice a day, along with some greens and shredded vegetables. Then, as the dragon grows, you can increase the amount of greens and vegetables. You can also dust vegetables and insects with a calcium supplement to promote bone growth. Mm, what about water? What kind of needs do they have for that? Well, since bearded dragons traditionally live in dry regions, they obtain most of their water naturally from what they eat. So you have to be sure to feed them plenty of vegetables that serve as good carriers of water. You should also spray them occasionally with a water bottle or provide them with a shallow water dish. Whatever you do, be sure to keep the cage dry or else mold and bacteria can grow that could make your dragon sick. Finally, you mentioned about lighting earlier. What do you need exactly to keep your body happy and healthy? Having a full spectrum light and basking lamp are key to raising healthy birdies. First, they need the simulated sunlight from the ultraviolet bulb to absorb rays that are vital to the production of certain vitamins and the high temperatures from a basking light aids in the digestive process. Now, what temperatures are suitable when you talk about the basking area? Like somewhere between 90 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit? So I don't think they need suntan lotion, right? <laughs> well, they don't. <laughs> okay, coming back to our discussion, I could put this beardy in an aquarium and just set him by the window which gets direct sunlight. Would that work? Well, actually, you can even take them outside two or three times a week under direct sunlight. However, putting them in a glass aquarium with exposure to sunlight won't be viewed as a replacement for direct light or a UV bulb because the glass filters out the sunlight they need. Wow! I didn't know there was so much to know about raising a bearded dragon. Well, that's the end of our program. Thanks very much for joining us today, Jeremy. My pleasure. Now, listen again. Hi, and welcome to our new show, Exotic Animal Kingdom, a program geared towards introducing animals to the young and old. In today's show, our young but experienced guests will introduce us to the fantastic world of bearded dragons. Welcome, Jeremy. Now, Jeremy, I must admit that a bearded dragon sounds something like out of a fantasy book. What exactly is a bearded dragon? Here, why don't you hold on to Bert while I talk about him? Bearded dragons actually originated from the deserts of Australia, and this is one of several species that survive in that climate. Today, Beardies like this one are bred in captivity here in the US. Okay, so what are some of the essential things to know when getting a bearded dragon? I mean, can you raise them as a family pet? Bearded dragons make great family pets and are very calm creatures. Yeah, this one seems quite friendly. You just need to know how to care for them. Well... What are some of the things you should keep in mind? First, you need to have the right supplies, some kind of enclosure, 
Like a cage or something? Yeah, a full spectrum fluorescent light bulb and a basking lamp, branches and rocks to climb and bask on, a food or water dish, and something to lie in the bottom of the cage. Okay, well, let's get down to some of the basics. What are the dietary needs of a bearded dragon? They sound like a very carnivorous beast. Perhaps uh, they eat fiery Mexican tacos or something like that? No, bearded dragons are omnivores. Omnivores? What exactly are those? Um, creatures that eat insects, vegetables and greens, the leafy parts of plants and their stems. Okay, you mean like, for example, carrots or something like that? Young dragons like bird can be fed small crickets twice a day, along with some greens and shredded vegetables. Then, as the dragon grows, you can increase the amount of greens and vegetables. You can also dust vegetables and insects with a calcium supplement to promote bone growth. Mm, what about water? What kind of needs do they have for that? Well, since bearded dragons traditionally live in dry regions, they obtain most of their water naturally from what they eat. So you have to be sure to feed them plenty of vegetables that serve as good carriers of water. You should also spray them occasionally with a water bottle or provide them with a shallow water dish. Whatever you do, be sure to keep the cage dry or else mold and bacteria can grow that could make your dragon sick. Finally, you mentioned about lighting earlier. What do you need exactly to keep your body happy and healthy? Having a full spectrum light and basking lamp are key to raising healthy birdies. First, they need the simulated sunlight from the ultraviolet bulb to absorb rays that are vital to the production of certain vitamins, and the high temperatures from a basking light aids in the digestive process. Now, what temperatures are suitable when you talk about the basking area? Like somewhere between 90 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So I don't think they need suntan lotion, right? <laughs> well, they don't. <laughs> okay, coming back to our discussion, I could put this beardy in an aquarium and just set him by the window which gets direct sunlight. Would that work? Well, actually, you can even take them outside two or three times a week under direct sunlight. However, putting them in a glass aquarium with exposure to sunlight won't be viewed as a replacement for direct light or a UV bulb because the glass filters out the sunlight they need. Wow! I didn't know there was so much to know about raising a bearded dragon. Well, that's the end of our program. Thanks very much for joining us today, Jeremy. My pleasure. That is the end of part 4. You now have 6 minutes to check and copy your answers onto the answer sheet.
You have one more minute. That is the end of the test. Please stop now.